नमस्कार हेलो एवरीवन ऑन दिस शो वेर वी आर ट्राइंग टू हेल्प बिजनेस पीपल इन वेरियस फेसेट्स ऑफ देयर फाइनेंस अकाउंटिंग टैक्स एंड रिलेटेड मैटर्स वी हैव वेरी वेरी सीनियर फाइनेंस प्रोफेशनल तेजस संघवी फ्रॉम एक्यूमेन फाइनेंस ऑन दिस शो टुडे uh he is uh, been uh, an ex banker on various uh, platforms like uh, yes bank and kotak mahindra bank in different stints of his career uh now he is focusing on helping uh, businesses expand with uh, organized structured capital and also capital from equity side and uh, various other formats of capital uh that is his focus area uh, welcome tejas on the show uh, the idea tejas is to keep uh, very very simple and crisp discussions on the show uh, without many terminologies and uh, difficult uh, uh, jargons being used there so that we can directly help entrepreneurs uh, solve their problems uh we will start uh, with questions uh, about uh, finance and financial aspects uh, that you are handling uh, with very very simple question and we will keep on uh, evolving over a period of time this is not the only uh, show that we are doing this is one of them that we are doing or you can say the first one of them so we will talk about simple things uh, one first question that i would like to uh, bring thing upon is uh, uh, what are the different types of capital that an entrepreneur or a business uh, needs at various stages of growth and uh, uh, what is the way to get that capital uh, for the entrepreneurs so thanks mitesh for this wonderful introduction and yeah we will try to see if we can help a, help a lot of entrepreneurs as well as business owners to solve their financial problems uh, yeah as you rightly asked about what is the various types of capital that would be required by each and every business owner at various stages of their business growth so just to answer in again layman terms uh, a couple of capital that we technically are all aware about is nothing but there are general sort of capex when a company requires when there is a growth which is required from the expansion perspective as well as a very important perspective of the other growth story is nothing but the working capital which is like the heart of the business which is technically required at each and every stage right from acquiring material running a company as well as making payments etc so yeah there are various sort of capitals that a bankers provide uh, so to answer it in layman terms these are the two aspects wherein uh, business would require the capital at various stages perfect so what are the ways in which the entrepreneur can uh, get access to the capital uh, so obviously it uh, depends upon uh, what sort of the industry the guy is into so just to answer so just to take an example of an exporter so today the way the exporter is able to raise funds so it would be similar to any a trader or a manufacturer but how is it different to just to throw some idea on the product as well so when i say an exporter so either he would be a manufacturer at here and would be exporting the goods to the outside countries or he would be procuring it from a local market and exporting outside so what is the sort of working capital that would be required so just to answer again in layman terms it says that the if he is a manufacturer basically he would require funds for doing the procuring the raw material doing the processing of that goods and then sending it to the buyer so there are different sort of uh, again finances available for this sort of a product so just to define it in two forms of working capital finance one is nothing but the pre shipment credit which is called as the ship money that is required to procure the goods as well as get the goods ready for shipment so this is again as explained it could be required to pay off their creditors technically process the goods and get the final finished goods ready the next leg of the cycle is nothing but the post shipment finance now depending upon the port of destination the transit times would be different as well as there would be a different sort of credit that would be given to the buyers so now considering this entire working capital cycle into the consideration right from the procurement of raw material till the time the exporter gets the payment is the actual working capital cycle 
so that that is how it can be assessed generally to again define it in banking terms uh, the working capital cycle generally depends upon the entire cycle it is generally in the range of 90 to 120 days depending upon the commodity as well as the product and bankers generally fund 75% of this because 25% is the promoter's contribution that come in from the uh, banking sources as such great so let's uh, harp upon export as a industry or exporters right. Right. Uh, as uh, our uh, audience to understand various nuances and types of capital in exports uh, it is very very intensive uh, capital requirement always from both pre shipment as well as post shipment uh, needs uh, so as i understand the cost of capital is always a concern for the exporters and they always uh, work on very very thin wafer thin margins and are always worried about if the cost of capital is not washing away all the profits from uh, their bottom line so how do you help or how do you ensure or how uh, can an exporter actually reduce the cost of capital with various different products or if you can give a case study of reduction of cost of capital it will be very useful for the exporters okay okay so as you very rightly pointed out uh, due to wafer thin margins and all those things what needs to be taken care of is nothing but their cost of capital and when i say their cost of capital is nothing but the working capital that is raised from the bankers so yeah the indian government and they have been kind enough on the exporters so there is a sort of export subsidy that a company gets when there is an export done so just to define a product, yeah, so there are a couple of uh, credit lines that an exporter can get. So one is obviously export packing credit. It is, uh, I would say, safer from a banker's perspective as well also to get into this kind of a product because it's not as uh, opaque as a cash credit wherein the client can withdraw the money and use it for various purposes. The export packing credit is generally given against the export orders. So there are different ways of again funding against that. When it is against only export orders and you, you fund the client based on a particular single export order. However, there, if there is a continuous export orders and all those things, the, it is called as a uh, the funding in an open running account. So what happens is nothing but you fund the exporter on the basis of export orders, but the orders can be submitted over a period of time. So the way it helps is nothing but the funding is done against the export orders. The cost now coming to the cost the idea is nothing but there are two options again available with an exporter either they can borrow in export credit which is already given in indian rupee or an export credit in foreign currency it totally depends upon the market circumstances when i said and giving you an example of an export packing credit in indian rupee there is a subsidy of three percent which is given by the government so just to take an example today if the rate is around say eight and a half percent for a indian rupee export credit the landed cost of capital which comes to the exporter is almost five and a half percent. Now, there were days when the dollar obviously was in a different state, the LIBOR was at its lowest down, and there was a huge difference when people used to borrow in an export credit in foreign currency. So, at those were the days when people used to borrow in foreign currency because they had the receivables, which was supposed to be again in foreign currency. So, there was no foreign currency risk, and in fact, there was an earning in the form of hedging. But today's market, yeah, if you ask me, it depends upon how the markets move. So today's market with the subsidy in place and all those things, the favorable market today is nothing but borrowing the export credit in Indian rupee. So these are the various products where a client has to take care of on how is the cost going to be done, taking care of the subsidy as well as taking care of the market circumstances. Great. So just to paraphrase, I think uh, we also need to take into consideration the foreign currency funding, which can be cheaper than the Indian currency funding. And another thing that he also suggested is to look at the subsidies and taking advantage of the subsidies. And third thing that I think was discussed in this uh, answer was with regards to uh, keeping the funding cycle very short uh, so that your funding requirement gap is very very for a very small period of time so that you automatically reduce your cost uh, in the process of funding so if we plan funding systematically the cost can be as low as three to four percent vis-a-vis what we are currently spending uh, 
there is what about the uh, non fund based uh, facilities which are required to be used in the scenarios in different export scenarios and how uh, we can optimize by using non fund based vis a vis the fund based uh, facilities in export scenarios so what happens mitesh again when you say in an exporter perspective i'll also give you a slight uh, background on the imports as well because there is a lot of non fund based uh, requirement on the imports for the lcs etc but what also happens in an export is nothing but if you are supplying to say a country like bangladesh where we do not have a comfort on the uh, clients in there because of the country as well as because of the clients based in that country so people expect the lcs to come in uh, with the funding that they are obviously getting as such so what happens in the, such case of a scenario is nothing but the buyer obviously gives the lc the lc is discounted here that lc also is from a bangladeshi bank uh, so there are options where you have also mnc say for example a stancy or an hsbc in bangladesh where you can do the direct discounting of those banks but if there is a local bank in bangladesh and if they need to discount that lc which is confirmed by an indian bank so that is how it can be helped from a non fund based perspective so what happens is nothing but the lc which we get over here the come the lc is getting discounted and confirmed and that is how the payment can be realized faster as compared to the payment which was supposed to come in the original mode okay perfect so uh, these are certain things which actually and uh, can help uh, exporters do the planning uh one thing that is coming in mind while discussing exports is exporters generally realize lot of uh, uh, foreign currency uh, and uh, one thing that we already discussed is the foreign currency loans for the exporters are there any other opportunities for reduction of uh, cost of capital on the capex side for the exporters who are having lot of realizations in foreign currency yeah there is so uh, very rightly pointed out of view ki if there is a capex and the main important part is nothing but if the client has a lot of export receivables the generally why people do not borrow in foreign currency here is that they do not want technically to take a foreign currency risk because if they borrow in a foreign currency and if their receivables are in indian rupee there is always a risk of the currency fluctuation which comes in in this case when there is a fixed foreign currency receivable which is supposed to come in the easiest part and the best part is to borrow the money in foreign currency which is obviously cheaper and available so there are two options if you ask me uh, so there is something if there is on a higher scale so there is a particular minimal criteria of an ecb external commercial borrowing which needs to be taken care of when they have to do a capex in that form also there are foreign currency term loans so even in a smaller case so to discuss specifically a case of a small scale industry or an sme exporter the best option is nothing but to have a foreign currency term loan which is called as an fctl which helps the cost of funds so just to again share an example if there is a term loan the term loan would be in the range of 9 and a half to 10 and a half depending upon the individual rating of the customer as such the same thing if you are borrowing in a foreign currency and if there is an export receivable where there is no currency risk that you are taking it could be a saving of almost 3 to 4% for sure obviously okay. it depends upon the fluctuation of the libor as well but again considering all those things and all those things there is a cheaper option available when you go for a foreign currency term loan great uh so going forward if an exporter actually faces an issue after borrowing uh, for non realization or something goes wrong with the realization okay. uh, right. how does he tackle this situation and how can he you know uh, uh, minimize the risk on uh, uh, such scenarios so that uh, you know his credit worthiness doesn't go down and he still continues to have flexibility of borrowing in opportunities opportunistic uh, situations okay okay so again a nice question because obviously one is about the cost of fund but other is about the realization of money when you say that yeah i might get a fund at a very cheap rate but what if my funds do not come in back so uh, earlier days there was something called as ecgc so which still goes on and all those thing and a lot of psu banks and all those things still Uh, i would say persuade the clients to go for an ecgc policy which technically 
is a credit guarantee sort of a thing if there is any delay default or something from the perspective but to add a perspective which is very widely available and which is very well known to the customers as well but here to highlight a few points which a few exporters or a business owners might not know today is there are certain unsecured lines so today there are a few institutions which do sort of a post shipment discounting where it is called as they do the factoring which is called as the call is without recourse so there is no recourse on the borrower and in fact you can sell your receivables to the financial institution so just to give you a highlight here say obviously there are a certain parameters certain protocols which needs to be followed when you need to go for factoring what is needs to be done is nothing but you have to have a select list of countries so just to share an example if a guy is supplying to say dubai london etc etc there are some list of 120 130 countries which are approved by those financial institutions so if your buyer is from that country obviously there is an internal rating of that buyer also which needs can be done uh, once that uh, due diligence has been done from the things the in fact the receivables also can be sold so how it does it help an exporter so tomorrow if there is any bankruptcy insolvency by the buyer for xyz reason we have heard of cases and all those things a lot of big multinational big companies also going bankrupt insolvent etc in that case these financial institutions have already taken the risk of those receivables and they have already been covered the factor by a small additional premium which you can say which is to be the added to the cost but if you ask me today when you get an unsecured when i say an unsecured once you have shipped the goods once you have raised the bl and you have sold the receivables even if the receivables do not come in the stipulated time period of 90 to 120 days still there is a chance and because of obviously there are as i said there are certain caveats so if there is any dispute related to the quality of goods etc it does not cover that but if it's a pure insolvency or uh, reputation risk or something of that sort it is completely covered and that could be a good product for an exporter who wants to even explore new economies so initially when these institutions came in the market they were only doing uh, the funding with these companies where you have had a track record say if you had a track record of two years or three years that is then they were funding those sort of receivables today if the company is approved if the buyer is approved and even if it's a first transaction you can get those sort of funds available which is again according to me a very good facility available on an unsecured front which can be an addition to your normal working capital funds which you have taken from your working capital banker so basically we are talking about a concept called as factoring for the exporters which is a rock solid uh, model of reducing risk of reputation or uh, insolvency of the buyer uh, if that situation arises uh, this kind of uh, acts as a policy of for loss of funds or loss of profit and it covers uh, your risk and it repays the banker who has funded your exports so this is very interesting idea okay. just, which we can actually utilize uh, and the exporters which I have come across in my auditing or uh, consulting journey uh, don't consider these kind of products on regular basis. That brings to me a last question uh, for the exporters again is uh, what are your tips or pro tips or suggestions for the exporters who are already exporting, who are already availing facilities, who are already in banking channel, uh, organized and structured, uh, but they would be missing upon certain things which they can take care of or reorganize themselves in certain manner and improve their cost of capital, reduce their risk, and also increase their flexibility when opportunity comes in the form of availability of capital. Uh. So perfect, Mitesh. I think we've covered a few points, but yes, just to conclude from that perspective, from an exporter's perspective, what they need to consider is nothing but obviously there would be an availability of pre-shipment finance, which needs to be checked from the commercial's perspective on what is the rate that is available. As we discuss, what is the current uh, market scenario which allows them to either go for a packing credit in Indian rupee or a foreign currency. Once that is checked, obviously the pre-shipment gets converted into post-shipment which is again once the post shipment gets the money comes and all those things the transaction has been squared off uh, to add to that uh, what an exporter obviously also can consider which we discussed in the last question is nothing but 
uh, obviously there is a limitation of funds availability because of the collateral availability and all those things which is a bigger challenge in the sme sector as well as the msme portfolio so what happens is nothing but even if there is a big order and something the promoters gets constrained because of the current facility available due to the collateral availability so that is when we said if there is a post shipment which has happened technically and if it's an unsecured line that gives you that sort of extra funds available obviously with an additional comfort of factoring as well which can be considered even if it's not a factoring uh, i would propose here this i was talking about a specific example where you need factoring as well but on a funding facility if there is a post shipment availability because for a bank the post shipment is a sort of a funding which is more uh, comfortable more risk uh, averse rather than getting into that sort of a risky proposition where you are providing the funds for the procurement of raw material so that is a again a facility which can be availed on a post shipment side because the comfort has been derived the goods have been shipped and if you are shipping it to a very reputed customer and all those things there are a lot of funding facilities available even for discounting those sort of receivables uh, coming to the final proposition you obviously from an exporter perspective what we need to check is nothing but be very vigilant about what are my commercials going on what are my uh, what i should say uh, how have i improved on my numbers so if there are improvement in the turnover the profitability etc etc you have the right to go to the banker and obviously ask for more limits on a similar amount of collateral because that's the comfort that you have built up with the banker over a period of years and that is where yeah the when you said ki what could be the proposition you could obviously push your banker to give you more limits because of the vintage that you had with the banker and that is how you can start negotiating with the banker great uh thank you i think a uh, lot of points we covered in this uh, session regarding uh, exports that is the more focused area uh, this is one of the industries who generally needs lot of funds and uh, they are always thinking of how they can increase their flexibility with the bankers how they can reduce the rates and how they can plan uh, or reduce the risk as well so wonderful session they just we will continue to have more such uh, discussions and deliberations on finance for uh, uh, the mid to large uh, companies as well over a period of time uh, in this show uh, and we'll continue to ask you a lot of questions in the meanwhile if you have any questions or any uh, doubts or any comments regarding the finance as an exporter as a business owner please feel free to post it on uh, our uh, youtube uh, channel as a comment and we will try to keep you posted with the answers and support you with whatever uh, solutions we have for you on this topic and of course uh, if you like this uh, session please share with uh, your fellow uh, business owners and uh, of course like Uh, and uh, subscribe our channel for future uh, reference and seeing more such uh, sessions along with myself and tejas and all other experts over a period of time thank you thank you very much goodbye thanks thanks a lot mitesh for this wonderful opportunity it was good to interact with you on a few uh, topics related to finance and hope this could be helpful to a lot of entrepreneurs and the business owners there thanks a lot for this opportunity and this platform thank, thank you. you mitesh